want to see us get a snow cat out of the water today, I think you picked a good day to watch another one of our episodes. You are not going to want to miss the story on this one. Welcome everybody back for round two. There is not going to be a round three, right, Nick? We're getting it this time. <laughs> so, back for the snow cat. And I believe that this is really going to be an easy one. Like, like, okay, I said that. <laughs> I said that last time, right? Here's the plan of what I have and what we've already done. So, some of you just rolled in, and what we've already done is we've got a pontoon boat in there. I'm going to say it was an incredible scene with that one. Like, I think it'll go. See if you push on it. Maybe. Oh yeah, we're in. We we got the boat in there. Nick was against it. I knew it was going to be a piece of cake. In addition to that, Dad and I we've already jetted out there. Now, if I remember correctly, it's somewhere right in here. We've already hooked it. Not only did we hook it, but check this out. Antone hooked me up with a new grappling hook. We have two of these yeah. because Sam and I were also going on a 38 day trip across the entire US. We have a lot of cars. We have like seven or eight cold cases to get. So I know all you guys are subscribed, but if you guys are not, you're not gonna wanna miss those episodes. Like fourth quarter is gonna be amazing. Anyway, so dad and I, we were out there, grappling hook, we hooked it. We didn't just like put this near the snow cap. Like we dragged it, we hooked it. Right now. There it is. Oh, we have it. it's now on there, which now brings us to how is the snow cap? How did it look on sonar? And what do we have as far as a game plan to get things going from here? So what we have is we have the boat ramp is over here. We have the shore that kind of comes down and it's actually dropped down. It's no longer 80 feet. We're down at 70 feet is where we're at now. Uh, so the snow cat, when we left it, it's kind of facing inward. So we have the snow cat here. We have the cab is this direction. So we are not going to be able to hook anything at the front of the snow cat. Right now, as far as where the grappling hook is at, I don't know if it's on left side, right side. All I know is that the grappling hook is on the snow cat. So I'm going to head down first and rehook wherever it's at. I'm just going to hook it to the back to where we're going to actually be towing it at. I'm also going to be taking one of these new fancy chains down because we have some new bags, we have new chains, we have a new game plan with all of this. These chains themselves will actually say 12,000 pound working load, 26,000 or so braking strength. We're going to be putting two bags on the right of one of these chains, two bags on the left, and one bag at the rear. So when I go down, I'll be taking one of these with me as well as readjusting where the line is that we're attached to to go down to your dive line. Um, I think that I had the, these hooks last time. I'm not sure, but once you throw it around the bar, you'll be able to fasten it on there. And then it has a spring load, so you'll want to push the spring in and then turn that so that way it locks in. That chain is not coming off of there. Once all three chains are on, the next divers that head down, whether you want to take one, two, three of these, come down, we want to set each, uh, we want to set a car or, I'm sorry, a shackle for each one of the bags. So normally we would use the carabiners, but because we're using 5,000 pound lift bags this time, I just want to make sure that we're extra doubly do secure. So go around your chain with it, set it, and that way it's there, ready and waiting for us when we come down with bags. So each bag will get its own shackle when we come back down. We might get to bags today to uh, pre-rig them, if not, we'll get to them tomorrow morning. Um, we have a safety side of it. Jonathan, why don't we uh, throw you back over here again? Thanks for the warning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I guess the big thing is, we uh, last time we were at 80 feet. Yep. This time we're only at 70 feet. Perfect. So it kind of gives a conversion on that one. And then I'll bring this in for, uh, for you as well. Okay. So like you said, this time, obviously the lake is way down from where we were last time. So it sounds like we're down at 70 feet which at this altitude, just uh, 10,000 feet, it'll be around 100, 110 foot theoretical depth that we're diving. Also at altitude, make sure you do proper ascent rates, not 60 feet per minute, we're at 30 feet per minute. Max dive times, 20 minutes at most. The shorter, the better, but at most 20, 20 minutes down there. 
Sound good for you? Sounds good to me. You're not going to push it on us? No, we don't need to. All right. No, we have plenty <laughs> of divers, and now we're just uh, hooking and enjoying the view. Perfect. Also, I mean, it is a lot less, not as hot this time, but still make sure you stay plenty hydrated while we're at this high altitude. If you are feeling sick of any kind, let us know early. We do have new safety equipment this time. Jared just got brand new O2 kit from Dan. Um, two jumbo kits, two jumbo D cylinders. Dan is not an individual, by the way. Dan is it's Divers Alert Network. I have a brand new one in the back of my car, and I believe Chris brought his down too. So we have a lot of extra O2 up here this time. Do we know water temperature today? We don't. It's wet. It's wet. <laughs> Last time it was 42 degrees. So you know, be mindful of uh, being cold down there, hyperthermia. So if you do start feeling chills or anything. You come up and we can't start warming you up. Nick's willing to uh, snuggle. Nick's willing to snuggle, okay. So oh, yeah. Maybe Anton too, so. I mean, that can be coerced. <laughs> yep. uh, on that note, we've got new yep. bags, but uh, we'll talk about the bags once we've got everything rigged. Let's take care of uh, you know one phase at a time and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Other than that, <coughs> appreciate everybody being here. Oh, the shackle. Right up. <laughs> High elevation diving. It's not for children. Here comes Nick. I'm up hard, I need a chain. Yeah, just one. Okay, here we go. is where we're going to. It's the very bottom, we're at 51 now. All right, there we are, we're something here. Okay, there's the front of the cab there. Go to the back of the cab right now. Grappling hook is on there nice. We'll come back to that in a moment. There's the tracks for the uh, driver's side. Oh, you know what? The axle is exposed. Go to the axle. I like that idea. All right, kicked up all the silt. Now I can't see anything, but I'm going to do it by fill. All right, that's locked on there. You can't see it. But I know it's locked on there. Now we're going to come back here. I'm going to grab this right here. Alright. Chain. This is part of that. Okay. Beautiful. Alright, we're good. Better stick up there. Hey, dude! Thank you. All right, there we go. The compression is done. Head on up. And there we go. With the We're good. Thank you. We hooked the right cat. That's also good news. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to change where those other two chains are going, though. It's not like I remembered it. It is nice. Totally it's different. Yeah. yeah. It could be a different cat. <laughs> you <don't see> <laughs> With that, I'll tell you what we have. I remembered those uh, steel frames coming off that we went to those before. But I guess we didn't. So at the very back of it, we'll have to tell everybody else. We have we went around the axle. So, right. So we're solid. We have we have middle axle at the very rear. But then we have those two kingpin yep. attachment points. That's where we went before with those other two chains. So we're gonna go one there, and one there. You agree? So I agree. From what you saw? We need to get ourselves a pontoon boat too. Like, yeah, yes. I cool. think we need a slew of boats. Yes, I, yes. We need the little blue boat. We need a pontoon boat. We need a little. Hey, I got that on the carabiner for you. Just we need a little sort of river light. jet boat. Just, yes, jet boat for and sure. And then we need that. A board. We need that pot, that fan boat that I showed you. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, from from yeah. Russia. I love it. I love it. Cool. 
We're gonna find out here in just a second what the status is of the snowcat and these carabiners, chains, lift bags. We got a great group going on here today. We're getting stuff done down at the bottom. We're gonna get that cat out here soon. Just check it out. Looks like we got one okay. We got okay, okay. we're good to go right here. Let's see what's happening. His chain, laid on the corrugated metal, and of course yours goes to the line. Excellent, let's get the next divers in. So it should be very obvious Excellent. where they are. Because the visibility actually isn't bad at all. It is. Yes. And we owe a big thank you today, Dad, as well. Michelle oh, is good. an incredible viewer from where do you live? Um, Fruta, Colorado. Holy where at? Fruta. Fruta, Colorado, yeah. by Grand Junction somewhere. Yep. Yep. And so you've been watching our show, and you're like, hey, I heard that you're coming up. It might be a little cold. Let me bring you guys some incredible soup. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, I've I can't wait to have already. some. So Michelle, First class. thank you for coming up, You're supporting welcome. everything that we're doing. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> no, something's not right there, Jared. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I plan on this thing going a lot faster today. <laughs> right, Anton? Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, I was, you guys got to turn it up a little bit here. Get after we it. had it attached. Yeah. You I dropped the anchor line. Why would you do that? I was trying to tie off to the pontoon. Because he told me to. Yeah, but you don't have to drop the anchor line to do that. I did not mean to. It slipped off. Oh, okay. And then I also forgot my gloves. Oh. Well, you could have just come back for the gloves without dropping the line. Well, uh, I'll go get it marked again. Yeah. All right, we should be getting close in here. Yeah. All right, toss it. Toss it there. Let's circle back and then drag it. Should be snagging. All right, so go ahead and let go of it. We're gonna go to the right a little bit more with that. You can see it facing down, you can see the window. I feel like they're dead in the water again. I think so. What's going on? You guys dead in the water? Yeah. I think he brought the boat mechanic this time. Yeah. Well, he evidently didn't get it, didn't get it running. Uh, well, when the starter melts, you really can't fix it. Well, just take us out. We'll do the dive and then you tow us in. Yeah, there we go. You're gonna do the dive? It's not attached to anything. So you di dive and you're gonna, like I've gone over it like 800 times. Right. And I swear, it's right over the top of it. It's just not hooking for some reason. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll drop down. Yeah, drop down, yeah, find it, it, hook it. it. Okay, so let's take you over by the buoy, anchor you, let them drop. And go from there. Don't sink that boat, too. Well, you know how to bring up boats, though, right? Yeah, we can bring. Well, we can bring up cats too. If uh, we just, yeah. If Jonathan wouldn't have undone it. All right, so anchor at the buoy, and don't unhook your anchor. Did you drop your anchor? Yep. Yep. Get All right. Up the back. Yeah, I would say it's within five feet of where that uh, line is at right now. I don't know what direction. The white boat, the one that broke down. Uh, the pontoon boat is. Uh, we need introductions, Tony. Lake of the Ozarks, amazing individual. I hear that you have like a big salvage operation over there. You came over here to help us yes. salvage the snowcat, snow which you're like, hey, this snowcat is like teeny tiny because what is the biggest boat that you've ever brought up? 64 foot Sea Ray Sundancer. Which weighs how much? 60,000 pounds. So 15,000 pounds is nothing, nothing for you. Absolutely nothing. All right, so, uh, so this is gonna be easy for you then. Well, if it was up. Is there any way to make this easier? Like, have a work boat. Well, we got a work boat. It's floating away right now. It's broken. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of work boat do you have? A 60 foot solid aluminum recovery boat with two cranes on it. Anton. I don't know what you want from me. He's got the right tool and it's not here. Two cranes. <laughs> yeah. We should have brought that boat. It's devastating information that I'm hearing right it's now. It's sitting on the trailer. Ready to go. 
Yeah. Can you got yeah. somebody that could bring it to us? <laughs> they left right now. 14 hours away. Oh, oh see, it's 14 hours away right yeah. now. Oh, jeez. Yeah. All right, let's just Well, right now, I'm glad that you're here. You, your boat mechanic as well. Yes. Currently, the pontoon boat is broke down. Good job. You got some tools. Let's get out there. We're only three hours behind, Antone. Uh huh. And I see you got your finished tools. What part of the boat do you work on with that? This one right here. This in particular. This in particular. That that's for Jonathan because Jonathan, oh. Jonathan, Jonathan is the reason for everything that just why we're behind right now. Why? What did Jonathan do? Jonathan took the anchor line, yeah, yeah the tow line, and he just he looked at it. And he's like, huh, I don't know what this is for, and he took it and he just went. Oh my God. And you watched it sink too. Like you literally face. watched it sink to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking to you right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Back out on the water. Let's go. Yeah, they found it. You dropped straight down with that buoy uh, on this mark. It was right on it. Yep. Right on the front. Nice. So we didn't move it. We just left it. Okay. And we couldn't find that other line, but we got the tank down and two shackles down. The, the line is right on the uh, back of it. We kicked up so much silt. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So you did not put a shackle on the rear axle one? No. Okay, so I still need to take one down when I take it back down? Yes. Which is also where the line is at. So it's Should not be, yeah. Okay, uh, I got it. They finally got a... Boat is broke. Boat is broke. So I'll hang here with you while you guys fix the boat to make sure I don't have to tow you back. We need a nut. We don't have nuts. No. That just that just came out just by itself. Like you didn't like. No, yeah, no. Like screwed it intentionally. No. It fell apart. Yeah. Is there a rope in a box somewhere? Part of his emergency. I don't know if that's gonna start with a rope. <laughs> yeah. Because we were already fighting it and fighting it and fighting. It. Oh yeah, because that's primer. Do so you think just tow, tow her in and find a nut? Tow her in and find her nut. All right. Some of you might ask. Well, I think you guys already know. We can't run the motors in there. There's just too much grass. So we got to roll in. Right? Oh, oh, oh. What? I found the nut, guys. Oh no! Why didn't we look there the, the uh, first time? Why would it be there? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, no, no idea. <laughs> look, there it is. That's been through the ringer. So you guys just need me, like, more hands on. <laughs> like death. Okay, so let's put good fuel in it. Do we have good fuel? Yeah, we do. We got non-ethanol sitting on my pickup. What? We have You've been holding out all day, Anton? I haven't what, been holding out. I've been reserving. That's what mine is, too. This is, this is what we do to make things work. When we get a good solid prime. Yeah, just don't get a good solid spark. And just blow the entire thing up. Go ahead. running smooth now with good gas. Explain to the viewer audience what ether actually does. It makes fire. It, it, okay. Ether is extremely explosive, a lot more than gas or diesel or anything like that. So that's why you use a little bit of it to get that initial spark running. And where are they spraying this ether? Into the carburetor. Okay. All right, so that good for tomorrow now? I just need a Phillips screwdriver to adjust it. Right. That's a wrap, boys. See you tomorrow. That way we stay on the same rotation, so. Right. Welcome back to the morning A team. Day two is where we're at. We're getting this today, right? Yeah, All right, everybody's Day's on board. Day. Where, where we're at and what we actually have today is we do have the boat that's actually up and running again now, so that's good news. So we've got a working platform that I don't, I don't have to tow with blue boat. Currently we have those the three chains on the very back. So if we're looking at the back of the cat, we ended up with the one chain down here at the bottom. We're gonna put a single back there. We ended up with a, a chain over on the, on the right and a chain over on the left. With that, we're going to end up putting two, uh, two bags over here. So two big float bags are gonna come off the right, one off the center. It's starting to get a little messy, but that's all right. And two are gonna come off of the left over here. What we're going to be doing right now is we're taking three sets of divers out. So dad and I, we're gonna be the first ones who are gonna head down. I'm going to double check 
all the uh, setting or all the chains Smiling. that I can sign off on it that I'm not gonna blame anybody else. Sound good? Sounds good. Because I, I love blaming you, Nick. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> so, with that, Dad and I, we're also taking a bag down. We're gonna hook one bag to the very center in the back. The second set of divers, if you feel comfortable taking a bag down each, so hook up to whatever side you guys decide. Just go, just go to one side. But what we have down there also is we have a 80 aluminum down there with a whip hose. So once you attach your bag, just take that, it's on the right or the left? It's on this side, right here. Okay, so you have the tank here, so you may need to disconnect it. It's just on a little, uh, it's on a carabiner. Okay. So if you need to disconnect it to move it over to inflate these, just take it, these are open bottom lift bags at the bottom, so just take a squirt, really just enough to get that bag taunt, right. but it's under its own, uh, it's being held up now under the air that you have in it. Don't go, you know, wild with it. Once we get, once, we, those three sets of divers go down. I'll head down for one more dive to double check all the rigging as we also have another diver down there with me also that will run around and we have a manifold that will hook up. Yeah, here we go, one, two, three, four, five lines to this manifold that will then run up to the boat. Okay, this is a boat. They, from there, it's coming up. So We doubt the boat. Yeah. We doubt the boat. <laughs> but what we don't doubt is we don't doubt that we're not getting this today, right? That's right. All right. All right. You get it done. One, two, three. AWP! Here we go. Hey, <laughs> we're moving. Look at us go. Water's like glass, it's just perfect. Sun's all shining bright and everything's all beautiful. Just a beautiful day here. So we've never taken these 5,000 pound bags down before, ever, Dad? I, I've I, never taken one down. No, I, I'm saying I never have. And oh. like you, honestly, are probably my worst dive partner to take this down with. Right oh, now. I will be. But uh, reg <laughs> regardless. <laughs> I, I promise. Yeah. Let's Do take it down me. from the top. So that way we don't have any air that's trapped in it because it's an, it's an open bottom. Okay, okay. So we're gonna drag it down from the top. When we get down on the cat, I want you to stay away from the back area right now. Okay. Because I don't wanna kick up too much silt. My number one thing is to see how everything is positioned. Okay. And then I'm gonna then come find you. And in finding you, we're going to switch to the bottom to then hook it up. Okay, so you want me to just kinda of hang Hang back. Hang back by the by the engine. With the bag. With the bag. Okay. Do not come. I will bring you in when I need you. Okay. Sound good? Uh -huh. From there, then I'm going to let you stay with the top as I rotate to the bottom and I'm going to hook the bottom of the bag up. And then you'll inflate it. And then I'll inflate it. Okay. After we do that, then we're going to grab the orange line and bring the orange line back up with us that was dropped yesterday. And then just hook that to something. Ow. There it goes. Whoa. That was a silly dive. <laughs> well, that was a little trip, trip jump. All right, I'm ready for this. I'm going to go down. As soon as I'm at the uh, bottom of the mat, go ahead and release it. You'll just feel me tug on it, all right? All right, let's see if we can actually make this work, huh? Okay, ready? All right, so the bag looks like it's floating pretty good. Looks like it's gonna sink, which means we're gonna have to control our points and going down. All right, see the cat? Figure out where we're at on it. Okay, so we're at mid-engine right now. Perfect. All right. You can leave Dad and the bag right there. Let's check this out. Okay, so they win. Oh yeah, that's a nice big king pin. I'm happy with that. We can put one back there around the king pin. That'll work out perfect there. I like that one. One king pin there, and one around the axle. This is the one down around the axle. 
happening with that one. Let me take the bottom of the back here. Just a little negative. No problems at all. Nice. Good. Go neutral. Okay, now what do you want to do with this? Oh, Elijah. Go to the passenger side. Okay. Do your hook. That's the right side looking at the back. You're at the back looking yep. forward. Yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's correct. You have the tank is over there. This is the reason why I'm sending it over there, so that way you don't have to unhook the tank yep. and move to the other side. Oh, okay. So do your bags there and inflate them so enough to keep them taunt. Okay. And then pre-move the tank if you have time. Before we come up, yep. Before you to the other up, side. So that way they don't have to worry about it. Okay. Perfect. So, perfect. Yeah. So. We just do it hey, hey where, where's your pony at? Oh, I got it. It's over at the truck. I just, uh, I don't know. I guess I got lazy. Do you know it's because of you being so consistent with your pony all the time? That I finally got mine, and then the and one time we I are. showed it, I'll wear it on the last. Okay, one. Okay, we'll do it for show from now on. So, what a pony <laughs> is for those of you who you know, are not divers, a pony bottle is a separate. In fact, here I have one right over here. I'll, uh, I'll explain all this to you. What a pony does is it allows me to have a separate air source that's separate from my tank. So normally before, I just had the one main tank that had my regulator that I could breathe off of. Then from there, it had it was also attached to a second air source that I could breathe off of. But the problem is, is it was all attached to one tank. So if anything happened to this tank, it goes empty, regulator, anything happens, I'm toast. So what a pony does is it gives me a separate system. So now my air is hooked up to that second system. So should anything fell here, tank goes empty, I still have air over here to breathe. That's what a pony bottle's for. I got that today. <laughs> Hey, why'd you bring the tank up? It's empty. How much air did you put in there? there was, it was odd when I went down to grab it. Uh -oh. Really? So I had to fill it with my loud air. Are they, are they inflated enough? Yeah, they're, they're, they're up. Okay. Wait, so that tank was on though when you went down, so you never even got to use it? No. I had to use my backup air to... Oh, seriously? <coughs> Huh. Oops. For two divers, otherwise they're going to waste all the time fighting. Please, let me you know, just quick do and it. easy. Put I got my bags. They really didn't matter. I guess. Uh, no, 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 no. Why is he Yeah, and I went down. So where we're at is we're attached to the very back. We have air in it. It's taunt. It's floating. We got rid of the anchor that was down there. We got the orange line back up. Jonathan. 
Sorry. No worries. Good. <laughs> Singled out. Every every attachment point looks incredible. Where we're hooked to around the axle, around those pins. They're actually bigger than I thought, so it's perfect. Nick and Chris went down with two bags. They felt like it was a bit of a struggle. So let's just send you guys down with one bag. So that way you guys get your dive in. Send you and Sam down, and then I'll go down with manifold. This Take my head. It's hailing now. <laughs> Wind's really picking up. Boo the bimini back. Things are getting exciting. <laughs> then, uh, what we have, Dan, is everything is experimental around here. So, as we just discussed with them, we're going to try something new, and that's going to be putting a carabiner to the top of this bag and dropping it on that line about three minutes behind them and just see if that bag will make it all the way down to them so that way they don't have to come back up the line. And the reason why we're sending these upside down is because it's going to let all of the air come out because these are open bottom and that way we're not fighting any of the air being trapped up at the top corners. It's looking good though. It's already past my feet. Sweet. So it's heading down. I would uh recheck the bags. The reason why it took us so long is just before it came up, I noticed only four of them were floating. There was a fifth one that was all tangled at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. I got it untangled as best as I could and up, but that's why it took so long. Okay. Did you get air in it? Yeah. Yeah. So there should be five. Slowly. Okay, we'll make this quick. Yeah, so I do want to go down. No, we're rolling. The bug are good thought. That's what it's going on. Ready? Okay. Yeah, let's go over to that descent line so we come down right on top. It was freaking awesome down there. Holy smokes. Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> I do think it's way better yeah. than last time. Yeah, visibility is way better. <laughs> Was. Yeah, I had a little leak coming into my suit, so I had to pop up a little soon, but I was able to connect all the manifolds, so I did my piece. <laughs> that was awesome, guys. You get a little cold? Yeah, I did, but hey, I, I did what I was supposed to, so. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. You can see the ground. Yeah. Then all the water of the world kind of got to me as it was coming into my time. suit, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the manifold hooked up, so that's the important part. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. We're sending Nick and Chris down on the boat, out on the boat, to fix a shackle, one bag, attach the air hose, generator fires up, we're lifting this thing. So that's, that's where we're at. That's a fun hail storm. All right, we got Captain M at the helm, taking us out for the final mission. The lift is gonna happen on this one, Em. Right, yeah, don't go any higher than that. We got Tony. Thanks, Tony, for coming out and uh, helping us run all these hoses. I mean, you are, like we kind of touched on you before, Lake of the Ozarks, yep. incredible rescue, salvage, whatever you know, captain. Everything. Salvage everything. So you've got uh, new big air compressors for us. And based upon these air compressors, how long is it going to take to fill 25,000 pounds? I would say less than 45 minutes. It's not bad. I like that. All right, if you do it right, Nick, this is the final dive of the day. You could be the hero to make the cat come up. I like the sound of this. All you got to do is see, like, it's very simple. You have this air hose connection here. Okay, yep. all you have to do is connect it to the manifold. Once you get down to it and you have it connected to the manifold, if you want to give me a tug on this to stop feeding. I'll try to give like three steady. Yep, perfect. Oh. Yeah, can't mess it up. If you take that in there, the hose on the wall. Yeah, yeah. 50 foot right there. That's good. They should be uh, right about the 54 to 56 mark at the top. Total? At the top of the bags there, yeah. Because we're 70 feet deep total, and then the bag's not taking anymore, so he's about 50 feet. Yeah, and the bags are floating. 
Good. We pulled on it, but there's too much slack. You probably didn't know, but you could rub the air, whatever. Perfect. Yep. Air away, Tony. I just looked around the bags. One of them is definitely full. Uh, bubbles we're seeing. It's coming out one of the vents, the top vents. The, there are two that, again, aren't really getting any air, and two that are about a quarter full. Still only a quarter? Yeah. yeah. Well, so for some is... reason, only that center bag is filling. Okay, but and this was off the center bag? Yeah. Okay, well now that that's off, then the, uh, the other ones should start filling up. position it's in and then come to shore and talk to us about it. Yeah. What we need to do is we need to just rotate it. We have a nice big axle that's exposed. So that's the first thing I want to do is get onto the axle with whatever we're going to be towing with. So right now I'll go, I'm going to go get a bunch of uh, our big heavy lines and start figuring out that and start getting things stretched out. Yeah. And see how much Tom, how much cable Tom has and we'll go that route. Yeah. taking this out to the top of the bag just to stage it and talk to the divers about what's going on. So we need to feed this out as we're heading out. Really? You'll see the other side. I don't think he's gonna be able to pull all this uh, seaweed. Look how much, look, it's like a whole wall. It's like a whole wall of seaweed. Okay, let's go to the other side. Hey, let us come out of the water. I say one last pull and we've got it right here. I think so. I've got enough cleared. I just need the uh, cable. Okay. I'm happy that we finally got a snow cat. All you have to do is call me. No, we're still in different. Uh, we have a plan at this point, Anton. What? Huh? Do we have a plan at this point? Yeah, we're going to move the truck forward a bit. Okay. We're going to drag it up, take a look at it, assess it, break it down a little bit. Okay. At that point, probably rip the tracks off it. All right. It, this is stronger than the orange rope. Really? Yeah, the orange is a 15. I want everybody safe with the cable. Do we want to put some a bag over the top of it? Let's put a bag or two over the top of the cable. Otherwise, I guarantee you, Sam, our viewers will be all over us. So we want to uh, make sure we're safe with all this. Keeping it safe. Yeah. Uh, Drex coming up. Yep. Oh, that's the axle. All right, okay, axle off. 
Hey, Anton, you're gonna have to put an axle back on. Well, she knows you. Clear. Good. All right. Okay. Mark, you got the super suit on. You want to just take the bag? I got it. Here. All right, we got water. We got Anton back there. Who's that? We're gonna start cutting some tracks. And uh, the thing is this, Tony, we would really appreciate like if you subscribe. We're on a mission to try to get to 1 million subscribers by the end of 2020 is where we're at right now, by Christmas. We have like three or four months to do it. I think a snow cat video will do it. So thumbs up helps, but be sure to subscribe. So if you're on YouTube, subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. It helps us, share the video. In addition to that, if you're on Facebook, be sure to hit the like button and follow us. Every little bit counts. That's how we're able to actually come out here to help. You know, this is like, in fact, let me go into that right now, Sam. Let's go over here and talk to the audience a little bit more. This entire episode is actually a little bit different because we have a conflict in the communities that we really have. We have, and it's not just between family members, you know, we have Ryan and, and Ricky. And these two were best friends since the age of eight. Like they played hard, they did good things, they did bad things. We all do bad things sometimes, right? Um, but we're, we're not here to focus on anything bad they've ever done. We're here to say these two were incredible men who happened to go out one night to play in the same fashion that Sam. You and I, this could have been you and I. Absolutely. Because 100%, if I have a snow cat and I have you with me. We're playing with it. We're playing with it. And that's all that happened on this one. Ricky and Ryan were out playing on it. 30 inches of ice, they got it stuck, they hit a soft pocket, they ended up spinning the tracks and the entire thing just ended up collapsing through the ice. And if you know anything about ice and collapsing and things just sinking, it creates this great big vacuum. And that's what ended up happening. You know, the snow pack went down, the ice and everything, and they went underneath and they got trapped in the middle of winter. And it's, it's one of those unfortunate instances, like I said. Sam and I could have been in that situation. With that, the way that I want to make sure that this is brought across the entire, you know, around the world, is that we're here because the Forest Service needs this out. We're here because we don't want the family to receive a bill from the Forest Service on this one. Um, we want, you know, the environmental impact. We want resolution for the community because it's been over a year and a half now that that's all that keeps going on, that the families are not able to move forward. The community is not able to move forward. And now the snowcat is coming out, the families, the community, everybody here, they're able to finally move forward. So we thank you for being here. We thank you for watching everything we do. There's a story with everything. You're not gonna to wanna to miss what Sam and I have coming up. We got Sam, Sam the Adventure Man. My hands are dirty, but let me bring you into this. Just Sam, Sam the Adventure Man. Going on quite the adventure is where we're heading to. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow is what we have going on. Starting right first thing. We have five, six, seven cold cases is what we have going on to go help more families. We have 20 ish other cars along the way that we're going for, and we're also bringing along a uh, new character, Dan Dan, uh, Dan Dan, the cameraman, is going to be with us as well. So, like I said, every you guys being here watching the stories that unfold us helping families across the US, us cleaning up the environment, clicking, like I said, click that like button, subscribe, do everything you can to help spread the message, and see what you can, what you can do personally to help get us, get us to a million before the end of the year. We'd really appreciate it. On that note, we really ramble on for like five minutes, but it had to be said, thank you for being here. Thank you. Let's get back to the show. All right. All right. Second pull up.
Anyways, here's what we need to talk about. Is we need to talk about Mike and his wife Rose up here at Grand Mesa Lodge. These guys, without them, we could have, uh, I mean, I would have been into it for a lot of money. But again, like, I, like you guys know watching the show, this whole thing is about volunteers and the volunteer effort. And where Mike and Rose come into this is they actually took care of us on cabins, not for one round, but for two rounds. So a uh, big thank you for you guys. I'm gonna throw up some like nice little drone footage right now of your, your place. because to help you guys but for the community and you help the community by getting this thing out of the lake yeah I really appreciate it yeah. so it's giving closure to everybody in the area yeah, yeah really. uh, so if you have any plans if you're a hunter fisherman you just want to enjoy the uh, the mountains up here out of Grand Junction is where we're at about 90, 90 70 minutes outside of Grand mm -hmm. Junction 10,500 foot up on top of the Grand Mesa beautiful yeah. place so check out GrandMesaLodge.com and uh, definitely come support these guys thank you absolutely we have a uh, private family time going on right now down there. Uh, just so they can see if there's anything they want to deal with. And... Looks like we got her. Man, it's been a long time coming. Been quite the quite the foe. Piston bully. Jeez, it feels great to have this out of here. I thought about this almost every single day this summer. <laughs> every single day. Underneath it. Is it trying to come out at all? It is a little. Okay, well, that's but good. the problem is it's going up underneath. Okay. Can we just pull it a while and see what happens? Yeah, pull it. As long as it don't come off the side, watch your side. It's kind of going back on the trailer now. The night is over it's not over yet like it's almost over but uh let's jump to this right now so here we are back up here at the lodge wrapping up with those pieces that you had mentioned earlier so we really appreciate you for the pieces and everything that you know you've done and helped you know, provide for for this you know, for your community and, and i'm almost starting to feel like and anton was kind of saying maybe the lake is haunted I was beginning to wonder when everything was going wrong and yeah, I think we had and we've never had like 15 16 17 things break at once and this this has been a challenge for us You've been a part of it from the very beginning. So you were successful. It worked. Thank you on that one And we really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Let me get to everybody else as well You know, we've got uh, Tony back here that came in from Missouri. We've got his a wife that's you know supportive of uh, letting him come <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Kimberly and uh, Elijah back there. Wave to the camera. Thank you, Elijah, for coming and helping. We've got Sam, Sam, the adventure man who's going on the road with us, as yes, well sir. as his kind lady, Renee. We've also got behind the camera, we've also got Dan, Dan, <laughs> the cameraman, who's going to be on the road for us quite a bit. Dan, Dan, the cameraman. Dan, Dan, the cameraman. Jonathan and Leah, all the way from Central Oregon to help us out. Thank you very much. We've got my best friend in the whole wide world. Make sure that you put this in here that Scott, he is, he is Scott my best knows friend. this. So you Mark hear that, Lee. Scott? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got my father, John, that oh. made it for a month. Ah, yep, we made it. Could not have done it without this guy either. Nope. Really, everybody here, but you know, this guy here, 
Kim, <laughs> beginning to who is you know part of the local search and rescue. Uh, you were actually there yeah. a few days that night. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, he's been there from day one when all this started. When you know Ryan and Ricky ended up going in the water. So he's seen this thing through from you know beginning to finish, as well as you know Mike back there. They were out there within. Back us up. Yeah. yeah. All of his contacts for us. On yeah, helping us with boats. Who uh, you know we've got trailers that have to be repaired now. Some detailing, but uh, we're gonna make it right with the equipment that has been broken. So we're not going to just walk away from this. So, um, good friend of Mike's, Topher. Topher. Topher is what they call me. Topher. Yes. <laughs> so he's up here helping up at the lodge. So really appreciate you know everybody there. But we're not done because we have a lot more going on. Uh, one of the other things we have coming up is we have a 2020 trip that's happening right now with Sam Sam the Adventure Man. This is like the first adventure along all of that. We have 25, 30 things going on. We're talking, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, bodies that we might be recovering along the way, 20 plus cars. We're, you're not going to miss that one. But the way that, you know, we're able to actually do this, one is just by you being here, watching the show, supporting it that way, thumbs up, comments. That alone helps put money in our pocket to make this make this happen. Without it, without you guys, the viewers, none of this would be happening. We also have shirts that are available in the description below. We also have new, uh, you know, proudly supporting Adventures with Purpose stickers that are also available. So do check that out in the description below. We'll link you to that one. I got stuff on my face. That's right. It doesn't matter. Okay. After such a long day, it does not matter. We've got Nick Rattler Wren. Been diving with me for a couple years now. Same thing with uh, Chris over here. So I thank both of them for coming all the way from Central Oregon. We've got Emily and Jared, who are new to you know hanging out with me, understanding the way that you know what Jared says we're going to do something, and in the end he ends up doing it. But we question a lot of things along the way, but we understand that you know what Jared says there's nothing that can't be done, and in the end we now know. There's nothing that can't be done. <laughs> I appreciate both of them for being here. Thank you for learning how I operate. Good with that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I think we're wrapping up with uh, Anton. Yeah. Who uh, you're gonna see a lot more of Anton here because uh, Anton is a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Lives in the same town as me. Yeah. We've worked on other projects together, mm -hmm. and you came all this way to also donate your time and your services to yeah. help get this cat back. Absolutely. And it was it was really meaningful for the family. Yeah. Um, and we're looking to do something good with it. We don't know what the end result of this is going to be yet. Right. Um, but Anton has an incredible business, Drive Unlimited. Do you? And with that, we're gonna be taking it back to Drive Unlimited, and it's a lighting store, it's a, what all is your store? We just specialize in upfitting, accessorizing. We do everything for everybody, you know? We're there to help. And, yeah. not, and not just cop cars, no, not just Burlington, no, Northern no, no, Santa everybody. Fe. I mean, anybody right, needs right. help, so. That's why I'm so excited about this project, because I want to make sure we respect the family and do something very special with it. So, yeah, I'm excited to work on so it. So, I'm excited yeah. to have Anton, so we're going to be doing updates uh, along the way, so make sure that you do subscribe so you don't miss any of those date updates. Um, in the end, though, I mean, this really was about, you know, coming together for an adventure, you know, and I want people to understand also is that, yes, while there's tragedy behind some of the things that we do, it doesn't stop us from having a good time while we're out here. Yes. And I really appreciate everybody that does come out for, you know, for the adventure is what it is. You know, it's divers getting together. Yeah. And thank you to, for having to, us. To make a difference. Thank you for making it happen. Yes. So we, without the, uh, the team volunteering their time, you know, like yep. Mike has said, like the family said, this would have never gotten done. And they don't know when they would have been able to move forward from it. So absolutely. Um, on that note, thank you everybody for being here. And that pretty much brings us to a wrap. So thank you. Thank you.